Okay, so in this video, we are going to briefly look at the behavioral perspective of personality. Um, basically, behaviorists see personality as a set of, ob of observable behaviors that have been learned and shaped throughout our life. So basically, personality is seen as this sum total of an individual's learned behavior. Um, so for example, we might describe someone as being friendly. Now, behaviorists wouldn't view that as being an inherent personality trait that they're born with. They would say that um, friendly is just a label describing a set of behaviors that have been shaped over time. Um, so they would say that a person engages in behaviors that we call friendly and they engage in those behaviors because they've learned that there are positive consequences to them. So this comes back to Skinner and his theory of operant conditioning, where um, our, the, the likelihood of us engaging in a behavior depends on the consequences, whether that behavior is reinforced or punished. Um, and he suggested that the same process is occurring with the formation of our personality. Our personality is shaped by the consequences of the behaviors that we engage in. Um, so you engage in friendly behaviors, there are positive consequences to that. If you have more friends, people are friendly back, that makes you more likely to engage in those behaviors. And as a result, the person is described as friendly, a label for that set of behaviors. Um, as another example, let's say there's a child that is praised for studying or rewarded for doing their homework. Um, they will then continue to do those things. They'll keep studying and they will, they will keep working hard. Um, and as a result, they might be called studious or hardworking. Um, if they're doing really well, maybe they're called intelligent. Um, but the point here is that these words that we often use to describe personality from this perspective are just labeled describing behaviors that have been conditioned. Um, so unlike Freud, who would want to try to understand your unconscious mind in order to explain the roots of your behaviors and personality, behaviorists such as Skinner would want to look at how your behaviors have been reinforced and punished in the past in a way that has led to the types of behavior and personality that you now have. Um, now, of course, as we grow up, we all receive reinforcement and punishment for certain behaviors in various ways. Um, the types of behaviors that are reinforced and punished in one person's experience will be different from someone else's. Um, and so this theory actually does a fairly good job of um, explaining the variability that we see in people's personalities. It also suggests that personality can um, one develop over our entire lifetime, and it can also vary as we experience new situations. As we enter new situations, behaviors continue to be reinforced or punished, and that's going to continue to shape the behaviors we engage in and the personality we have from this perspective. Now, this view of personality that I just discussed is the traditional behavioral perspective. Um, so remember that the traditional behaviorists saw um, psychology as something that should only look at observable behaviors. So that is the perspective it takes. It looks as per at personality just as a set of behaviors. Um, however, most modern behavioral theorists uh, theorist today take a slightly different view um, of personality development. Um, and this different view is called the social cognitive or social learning theory. Um, and it suggests that in order to explain behavior, yes, learning is a big component of that um, and in, in our personality, but we also need to take into account cognitive and social aspects um, of our behavior. Um, the reality is personality is not simply made up of, of just a set of learned behaviors, but it also includes the way we think about ourselves and the world. And that is what uh, the social cognitive or social learning um, perspective um, looks at. Okay, so um, one of the big psychologists um, that falls under this social cognitive perspective is Albert Bandura, who we've spoken about before. Um, he viewed um, personality as the, as the result of both learning and cognitive 
influences. Um, now, I have shared um, some, I think one one or two videos um, that explores reciprocal determinism. So make sure to watch those um, to understand his his perspective of personality um, and our behaviors. Um, but what I want to briefly mention, um, because it's not really explored in the video, is observational learning and self-efficacy. Now, these are both concepts that we have discussed previously in relation to Bandura. Um, so, for example, last week we spoke about self-efficacy in relation to motivation. Bandura basically suggested that our self-efficacy or the level of confidence in our own abilities will influence how motivated we are to engage in certain behaviours. But he also applied this um, or believed this played a role in our personality. Um, so, for example, if you have someone that has a very high sense of self-efficacy, they are probably going to be much more likely to be open to new ideas. They'll be more flexible um, and open to things because they have that confidence in their abilities. Um, whereas if you have someone with very low self-efficacy, they might um, they might believe that they won't succeed regardless of their abilities and their experiences um, and may be less open to trying new things. Um, when it comes to observational learning, um, well, first of all, let me go back to the example I mentioned on the last slide. Imagine you have a child that is being praised and rewarded for studying and, and doing his homework. Then he's more likely to continue those behaviors because he's being reinforced for them okay however the behaviors we engage in if you remember back to the bobo doll study that we looked at um, the behaviors we engage in can also be shaped vicariously through observational learning okay so by observing others we learn which behaviors are acceptable and rewarded in our culture and that is going to shape the behaviors that we engage in um, so returning to that example perhaps the child saw his older brother being praised and rewarded for studying and doing his homework um, and as a result the child was vicariously reinforced the child becomes more likely to engage in those behaviors because they've seen someone else get rewarded for it um, and as a result that child is then described as being studious hardworking, etc um, the last thing I want to mention, another social uh, cognitive theorist is Julian Rotter, um, who proposed that two key aspects of personality are locus of control and expectancy. Now, locus of control is covered in the videos I have provided, but expectancy is not. Um, so this is just the predictions we make about the outcomes of our behaviors, basically what we expect to happen. So this again ties into operant conditioning and this idea that whether or not we engage in a behavior depends on the consequences or the consequences we've experienced in the past, whether or not uh, it's been reinforced or punished. That is then going to guide the expectations we have. If in the past we've been um, rewarded for, um, or there's been positive consequences to a behavior, um, then we're going to expect positive consequences again, and that's going to influence whether or not we uh, engage in the behavior. So basically, our from this perspective, our personality and the behaviors we engage in will depend on the what we expect to happen as a result. Um, so again, returning to that example, if uh, if the child believes that studying will result in a good grade, then the child is more likely to study versus if the child thinks it's not going to make any difference. Maybe that's because of low self-efficacy or some other reason. But if the expectation is studying won't make any difference, then they're going to be less likely to study and less likely to be um, described as being studious and hardworking.